I mean, I think there are two primary paths to this. One is philosophical and the second is autistic. And in philosophical, I mean, well, it's not right. There are not two paths to this. There, there are many paths to this. There, 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 so, so there are many paths to this. I'm going to take three today. We're going to take three. One is education. Two is intellectual content, intellectuals. And three is art. So let's start with the schools. We need to replace the government schools. <laughs> we just need to replace the government schools. There's no more important political issue than privatizing education. Or just as a stopgap measure, just increasing the options in education. Just increasing the options in education. Because the government schools will never change. You cannot bring the kind of educational reforms kind of a change in educational attitude that I'm talking about into the government schools. That just is never going to happen. There's no incentive, and there's the opposite incentive. So it just never will happen. You have to find private outlets for schooling. Where, you know, anything would go. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of vouchers, but it's, for now it's better than nothing. I'm not, not a fan of charter schools, but for now... It's better than nothing. And the ultimate, which we should be arguing for, we should be arguing. The ultimate needs to be that we need to argue for private education in every opportunity, in every stage, every single, everywhere. The complete and utter privatization of education. The complete eradication of any state involvement in education. And, you know, we'll do a whole, we've done shows about that in the past. We'll do more shows about that in the future. But, um, but that is so, so crucial. Number two, we need large numbers of intellectuals to be producing the material that reshapes the debate, reshapes the debate completely. We need to reshape the debate about economics. We need to reshape the debate about history. We need some real history, true history, valid history to be produced. So we need, you know, people writing about the Enlightenment, writing about the founding of America, like Brad Thompson just had, has in his book about the founding, about, well, in his book about the Declaration of Independence. We need people to, we need intellectuals to present the facts about the world out there, about science, about capitalism, about freedom, about history, about what really happened, partially because that's what our schools in the future will use as the basis for what they're going to teach the kids. So we need intellectuals in philosophy, in history, in economics, but also in places like biology and, and, and the sciences. In every one of these fields, we need more than one intellectual. We need multiple voices who can articulate the case for objective reality and objective facts and the truth about what is really going on. So we need good scientists, good psychologists, good historians, good philosophers. And we need hundreds of them. They need to dominate the debate. And they need to be the kind of intellectuals, I like to call them crusaders, who are willing to take on the fight, who are willing to take on the enemy, who are willing to challenge the status quo, who are willing, through their example and their theories, to teach people how to think. Stefan says online, epistemology is so important. Yes, and the best way to teach people epistemology is to model it to make arguments based on reason, to use logic, to discuss facts, to show people how thinking is done. So we need to incrementally, over the next hundred years, because it's going to take a long time, we need to privatize the schools, we need to get 
dozens and ultimately hundreds of new intellectuals writing, speaking, teaching, writing, writing, writing. And then the third is we need artists. Because art is a shortcut. Art is a shortcut that inspires people to be the best that they can be, to rise up to the occasion. If you want people with self-esteem, with courage, then we need to model that courage. We need to show them what courage makes possible. We need to show them what bravery means. We need to show, not just talk, show. And art shows. It shows in its novels, in its paintings, in its poems, in its, in its sculpture, in its paintings, what life can and should be. It shows what it means to live a full life, what the universe can be if one lives such a life. It would show the effects of freedom, the effects of the right philosophy on an individual life and why they should embrace it. It's a shortcut to show the kind of values, the kind of world, the kind of life that is possible to individual human beings. So we need great romantic art. Great romantic art. Not cheap romantic art. Not poor romantic art. Not mediocre romantic art, but great romantic art. We need more Hugo's and more Rand's and more Dostoevsky's. Although you're not going to get them immediately, so you need people who are not as good, but somewhere in between, somewhere on the way. At every level, we need good children's art, but we need great young adult art, and we need fantastic grown-up art. Because art to, can show us what is possible to us. Most of us lack the kind of imagination that would project what is possible. That's the beauty of artists. They have that imagination. They have that ability to recreate a world in their own image, based on their own values. And we need them to have the right values. So, that's what needs to be done. And it's a long path. And there's a lot of things that need to be done to change the world. From getting... from getting um, our schools privatized, or at least moving in that direction, to getting some great artists who, 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 who produce inspiring art, to producing the kind of intellectual content that is going to move the culture in the right direction, because it's going to move the culture in the direction of facts, in the direction of learning the right lessons from history, understanding the principles of economics to understand what the consequences of actions are. We need all of that. And as we move towards a world in which people can think as they've been educated properly, they have the oh, by the way, attention span. I wanted to say this about attention span. Art is one way in which we can expand and extend our own attention span. Whether it's by sitting down and reading a book, a novel by Victor Hugo, which is thousands, you know, hundreds of pages long, and, and I engaging with it and, in, you know, really delving into that universe and letting it sink in and spending the time in that place without shifting between our iPhone and whatever else stimuli is out there, but really sitting quietly in a room and reading. 
Or another way, you can, you can extend your own focus and your own attention span. Is use classical music. Put on a, a 45 minute symphony and try to do nothing but listen. Your mind will drift. You will lose focus. But put your cell phone and everything else far, far away from you. I've many, said many times, turn off the lights, close your eyes, try to think about nothing except follow the music. When your mind drifts, use your will, your will to focus back on the music. It'll train you to focus and it'll train you to sustain that focus because classical music is long. It takes time, and therefore it needs sustained, it requires sustained focus. So I think using art, great art, there's plenty of great art that's been produced in our history. Not a movie that you, something needs to blow up, something needs to explode, something needs, somebody needs to be shot. Some blood needs to splatter all over the screen every two minutes in order to keep your attention. But no, you know, go watch an old movie. Go watch a movie from the 40s and 50s that was slow and smart with great dialogue and real meaning and real purpose. And again, sit and watch the movie for an hour and a half without looking at your phone. Turn off all the lights. Just focus on the screen, and nothing else. So try to get away from action movies. Now, that doesn't mean you should go watch The Irishman, which is four hours long of sustained... I mean, you cannot sustain an attention span during The Irishman because it's such a bad movie. But there are long movies, The Godfather for one, that don't involve constant violence and constant car chases and constant explosions in order to keep your interest. Think dialogue. Think characters. And I can give you recommendations if you want about movies. So use, use art to improve yourself. To improve your own moral character by looking at the art and, and thinking about what makes certain people heroic and what makes people certain people cowards. Watch the art, experience the art, and try to allow and, and focus on it, even on a painting. You can just look at a painting or you can focus on a painting. Try to really look. Try to see what the artist is trying to convey. Look at all the details. Look at everything that's in there. It'll sharpen your mind. If you go to a museum and you do it right and you really focus on all the elements in a painting and you spend real time in front of paintings, not just quick running through the museum, then when you get home, you'll start noticing things in your environment you didn't notice before. It'll sharpen your mental acuity. I think music does that. It'll increase your attention span and increase your focus. Art is incredibly powerful. Now, I will do another show maybe, maybe uh, later this week. We'll talk about what you personally can do to make your life better and prepare you for this amazing world of the future. But we'll talk about that, personal values, how to, how to live a better life for yourself. Now we're still talking about the culture. All right, so that's what we need, right? That's what we need to fight for. That's what we need to get to. It's, it, it is a lot to do. There's a lot to cover within each one of these elements, art, intellectual battle, education. The what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life 
and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.